And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they bring unto thee pure oil olive beaten for the light, to cause the lamps to burn continually in the tabernacle of the congregation, and it shall be a statute forever in your generations. The Eternal Light. The National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated independent stations present The Eternal Light, a program which comes to you under the auspices of the Jewish Theological Seminary of America. Our program today, Moses Levy in the Wilderness, is written by Joseph Mindell. Uh, excuse me, uh, will you tell me, please, where is the governor's mansion? Huh? I have just arrived here in St. Augustine. Where is the governor's Oh, haga el favor de decir. He is in a hurry, that well, one. Monsieur. Sir, uh, excuse me, but can you tell me. Quoi? Ah, uh, dites-moi, s'il vous plaît, où est le palais du gouverneur? Le gouverneur? C'est pas là. Voyez-vous? Pas là. Huh. <laughs> well, I do not see that there is anything humorous. Well, nothing personal, mister. When a man asks a question in three languages and gets no answer... Well, should I try Arabic or Hebrew or Danish? Could you? If you have lived in many places, you'll learn many languages. Where are you from? Well, why should it interest you, my friend? Stockton's my name, Jeff Stockton. He got any secrets, I don't want to know them. Well, it's no secret, Mr. Stockton. I was born in Morocco. You don't look like an Arab. My name is Moses Elias Levy. Do I look like a Jew? Don't know. I never saw one before. Um, about all those languages... Oh, yes. Uh, after Morocco, I lived in Gibraltar, then the island of St. Thomas, then Cuba... And most recently, Charleston. Yeah? If you will be good enough to tell me where I can find the governor... Old Hickory's in Pensacola on the Gulf. Old Hickory? Andy. General Jackson. But he has a deputy here in St. Augustine. If you don't mind my asking, Mr. Levy, you travel a good bit. Any special reason for coming here to Florida? A very special reason, Mr. Stockton. I'm tired of traveling. In the year 1821, Moses Elias Levy came to St. Augustine in the territory of Florida, newly acquired from Spain. He came as one who has been a stranger in strange lands, so that his coming was a seeking, a pilgrimage. It is good of you to see me. As deputy governor, I'll be glad to help you in any way I can, Mr. Levy. Thank you, Your Excellency. <laughs> Again, I make you laugh, Mr. Stockton. I, I think you are easily amused. Oh, don't mind, Jeff, Mr. Levy. We fought together in the Seminole War under Andy Jackson. He still sees me in dirty buckskins covered with swamp mud. Hey, Jeff? I sure do, Your Excellency. <laughs> Besides, we don't go much for titles. I see. I suppose it's natural. It is. Considering that the governor himself is known as Old Hickory. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, what can I do for you, Mr. Levy? When I was still in Cuba, I bought some land here in Florida. Oh, whereabouts? Uh, inland, around Lake George. I plan to grow sugar cane there. Well, it's out of the question. Sugar cane grows in Cuba. The climate here is not greatly different. Mr. Levy, you go a few miles inland from the ocean or from the Gulf of Mexico on the other side of the peninsula, and you're in heavy forest, swampland, jungle. It's a wilderness. Land can be cleared. Now, you don't understand. There are no settlements, no roads. No roads can be built. Hmm. You're a stubborn man, Mr. Levy. Now, I'm trying to help you. You can by finding me a guide. Oh, if that's what you want, it's easy enough. Though Jeff was a scout for Jackson in the war. He's been through that country. 
Well, Mr. Stockton, will you do it? I don't know. I'll pay you well. I never yet did anything for money I didn't want to do. Well, I meant no offense. Oh, money don't offend me, mister. I tell you what I think. Might be worth it just to see your face when we get there. All right, Moses Levy, I'll take you where you want to go. What do you think? Uh, it is a wilderness, Jeff. Uh, well, that's what I said. I guess you've seen enough, huh? Uh, this little clearing is the place to begin. <sighs> we'll start back to St. Augustine in the morning. Stream runs close by. The ground is level enough. You... Well, I'll be... Well, what's the trouble, Jeff? We were five days coming 60 miles. From the St. John's River on, we practically chopped our way through. This is the only spot for miles around where the trees thin out enough so you can see the sky. And you start making plans. Of course. That's why I came. <laughs> yeah, you're a stubborn man, Moses Levy. That's what Governor Jackson's deputy said. Still, you came with me from St. Augustine. Yeah, I figure you and Andy Jackson are the two stubbornest men this side the Alleghenies. <laughs> well, all I want is to build a house and grow sugar cane. <laughs> That's all, huh? I'll need men with strong backs, willing to work... Can I find them in St. Augustine? Well, sure. Now, let's see. The uh, the other houses should be further down along the stream. Now, listen to me. You... What other houses? For the plantation workers later on. Now, what's on your mind, Moses? To grow sugar cane or build a city? Well, maybe the two are not so different. Will you help me, Jeff? Nobody can help you. What you want can't be done. I do not know this General Jackson of yours, but I have a feeling that on occasion you have said the same thing to him. Moses, if you and him ever got into a hassle, it would be a sight to see. <laughs> he and I would not disagree, I think. About his deputy in St. Augustine, I'm not so sure. Now, you know what I want, Jeff. How many men will I need? Plenty. First, you'll have to buy enough slaves. No. Well, it's the cheapest way. I want the best way, not the cheapest if you are building a city or growing sugar cane, the best way is not with slaves, but with free men. Now, you will pick out the logs of oak, of hard pine, and put them aside. You understand, Miguel? Si, senorini. The carpenters will saw them into planks. The rest... The rest we burn when we burn the stumps. It will be done. Oh, when is the other, senor stock? Same to you, Miguel. Hey, I sure got bargain for you and him and the others. What do you mean, uh, the others? The Spaniards. They work for half the usual wages. Not here, Jeff. I pay by the work a man does, not according to where he was born. Don't be a fool, Moses. You know what they work for under the Spanish governor? I do not care to know. They don't expect no more, those Spaniolas. Well, what's the matter now? I wonder, when you talk about me, Jeff, you say, that Jew? Oh, come on now, Moses. That's different. Well, Florida has an American governor now. That's why I came. Because in America, there are not differences for different people. But the same for all. At least, that is what I thought. Well, sure. Then I will pay each man the same. It's your money. But it seems to me there are easier and less expensive ways of building a plantation. Maybe, Jeff. But I am also building a place in which I want to live. Slowly, the wilderness yielded a small space, and Moses Elias Levy built a house. Andrew Jackson named his house in Tennessee the Hermitage, the place to which he retired from the world. Moses Levy called his the Pilgrimage, coming to it eagerly after long seeking. When the house was finished, he made the journey back to St. Augustine. Howdy, Mr. Levy. I hear you pay good wages, Mr. Levy. You need another hand? Well, as a matter of fact, I am looking for people. Well, you found one. 
Is your family with you here in Florida? Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Levy, I'm a backwoodsman all the time, but a soldier when there's fighting. All the family I got's right here, my, my gun and my axe. I see. You give me a good partner, I can clear an acre in a week. You can believe that. Oh, I believe it. But there's enough land cleared. Now the stumps have to be burned out, the soil made ready, the crop planted and cared for and harvested. It's year-round work. Well? Uh-uh. You don't want me, Mr. Levy. You want a man to live on the land. There's a time for the gun and the axe, Jeff, but the land is ready now. Be reasonable, Moses. You can't expect men to bring their wives and children to live out there. Well, I do expect it. Everybody don't have the same hankering for your wilderness that you do. A wilderness is where no people live. Jeff, tell them houses are waiting for them, a place to work and to raise a family. Everything. Uh, everything except one thing. What's that? A school for the children. Jeff, look for people willing to live on the land and look also for a schoolmaster. Is this an official visit, Mr. Deputy Governor? Uh, call it unofficial curiosity, Mr. Levy. Ah, I see your settlement is growing. Twenty families so far, and more coming, Jeff Stockton says. Oh, yes, Jeff Stockton. Uh, he's been making inquiries about a schoolmaster. Yes. Mr. Levy, officially this is not my business. Yet. But maybe you won't mind if I make a suggestion or two. A man should never refuse to hear advice. Mm -hmm. I've had experience in this inland country. Out here, important matters should come first. I agree with you entirely, sir. Oh, do you? Well, take the road, for example. From the St. John's River on, it's, well, it's little more than a trail. We are working to improve it. Then there's the matter of defense. It's true that Indian trouble is unlikely. We are friendly with the Indians. Oh, yes, I know. Then you don't need a stockade. All the same, you should post sentries to keep watch. We had a meeting to consider it and uh, voted against it. It's not a question of voting. Mr. Levy, the safety of this settlement is my responsibility. And mine, too. But uh, we do not seem to agree on what safety is. No, not when you neglect your roads and defenses and look for a schoolmaster. I have also had experience with safety. When I was a child, my father was Grand Vizier to the Sultan of Morocco. Uh, Mr. Levy, I will listen to the story of your life another time. I, I want you to understand now. We lived in a house guarded by soldiers and surrounded by a wall of stone 12 feet high. But they were no protection when a new sultan came to power. Well, get to the point, Mr. Levy. I lived in Europe when it was ruled by Napoleon and in Cuba under the King of Spain. But you're in America now. It's different. Yes, it is different. If there are Indians or outlaws, I'm not afraid because guns and stockades can be sufficient protection. But how do you provide safety against kings and emperors? You're talking about something else entirely. Do you know the words of the psalm? Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. I did not come to hear scripture, Mr. Levy, but to investigate the conditions of your settlement. That is just what I'm talking about. An investigation made long ago by a wise man who came to a town and was shown the watchman on the four corners of the walls. They are no profit to a city, he said. They are only an expense. Save your stories for children. Do you take me for a fool? No. A man as wise, I hope, as this one. For well, he said, The Lord does not guard a city where there are no schools. The real watchmen are the schoolmasters. Uh, Mr. Deputy Governor, when you return to St. Augustine, will you help Jeff Stockton find us a watchman? Hey, 
That's no use, Moses. I asked pretty near every man in St. Augustine that can read and write. Jeff, uh, this is Miss Sarah Hickman. Uh, howdy, man. I even sent word to Pensacola. Yes, I know. That's why Sarah is here. But Jeff, your mouth is open. You're not telling me she's going to teach school here. Why shouldn't I teach school here? I know how to read and write. And a good deal more, according to my friend Rebecca Gratz of Philadelphia. But... But a, a woman schoolmaster. Usually called schoolmistress. You object to females, Mr. Stockton? Why, no, no, no. Uh, only you being out here alone. I've been alone in the Florida Territory since my father died. It's not safe, Miss Sarah. I came here alone from Pensacola. No one bothered me. I mean, well, you, you being a single woman. Mr. Stockton, I'm an old maid of 32. I'm not handsome, no, but... No, I wouldn't say that. I'm saying it. I'm no beauty, but I have a mind and some education. And I intend to use them for a good purpose. Does it have to be in Moses Levy's wilderness? There are families with children here, and there will be more. Don't you believe in education, Mr. Stockton? Oh, I'm, I'm all for it, ma'am. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, once or twice, I, I even wished I had more learning myself. Uh -huh. Hold a sec. Now, now, don't you go aha on me, Moses. You ought to know by now that I'm going to say what I think. I'm listening, Jeff. All right. If I wanted to grow sugar cane, I'd clear me a plantation and get to work without bothering my head about schools and school teachers. If you were contractor to the Spanish army in Cuba, why would you want to leave a prosperous business to grow sugar cane? Why? Well, because any man in his right mind would rather live in a free country. Then you understand why I have to do what I'm doing. Mr. I know Lee. what you're trying to say, Moses. Now, you listen to me. If it's got to be schools, that's the government's business. Mr. Levy, am I or am I not the schoolmistress of this settlement? There are problems, Sarah, but you are. Then I must go to work. Where is the schoolhouse? Now that is the first problem. The schoolhouse has not yet been built. understand you, Mr. Levy. It's very simple, Mr. Deputy Governor. Aside from the construction of the building, we will need desks and benches, slates... And... and school books. The total initial cost is in that itemized account. The yearly maintenance cost is less, naturally. Only replacement of worn-out books, slates, uh, and uh, Sarah's wages, of course. If that amount seems large, I can do with less. Well, I won't hear of it, Sarah. You're entitled to... If this is some kind of joke, it has gone far enough. A gentleman, sir, does not lose his temper. And a lady doesn't make herself ridiculous in public. Do you really expect me to advance the money for this school of yours? Who else? After all, as representative of the United States government in the Florida Territory, you have certain duties... Don't uh... teach me my duty! All right. All right, let's be reasonable about this. Now, look, you can use the fees you will collect as collateral. Oh, and... no, no fees. It should be a school free to all children. Well, have it your way. In any case, surely your credit is good, and if you're temporarily short of funds... It is not a question of that at all. Well, then why do you come to me for money? My dear sir, I do not need it for myself. Florida needs it. I... I just don't know what to make of him. You've been listening, Jeff. What is the man after? He only wants to build a house and grow sugar cane. That's what he says. Don't you believe it. You're beginning to talk like him. What does he want? I don't know for sure. It takes a little time to get to know Moses Levy. Maybe he wants to civilize the wilderness. It is no great mystery. I only want what every man in his right mind wants. You have not moved from one place to another all your life. Maybe you are fortunate. I, I do not know. But always where I have lived, the people were untaught and ignorant. Because kings and Bonapartes do not want the people to be in their right mind. As far as I'm concerned, Moses, you don't have to prove anything. You can do what you like in your wilderness. Ignorance is also a kind of wilderness. 
And I do not want to live in a wilderness, but in a free country, among free men. Don't you see? I'm not the man you have to convince. Mr. Levy, it is not a matter of convincing anybody. You can afford it, you say? Fine. Then go ahead and have your school. I think you misunderstand me for a purpose. Yes, I can afford to build a schoolhouse and buy books and benches and pay Sarah's wages. But can you, can the territory of Florida afford not to do it? What was it you said, Jeff? If there are to be schools, then that is the government's concern? Mr. Levy, you force too much responsibility on me and take too much on yourself. You give me too much credit. It is not my idea. There have been so many others before me. Sarah told me about a man who was once your president. Thomas Jefferson. I do not remember his words exactly, and they should be said as he said them. I remember. If a nation expects to be ignorant and free in a state of civilization, it expects what never was and never will be. I will tell you what I expect. Not to make the whole world free all at once, but to begin with a small clearing and make the wilderness smaller. didn't really expect him to do what you want, Moses. Well, now, did you? Well, it is not a simple question, Jeff. You see, I am a very practical man. <laughs> practical? What I am. I know what is likely to be, but I must act as if I expected something quite different, as if I expected what should be. And one day it will be different. Oh, bonjour, Monsieur Levy. Comment ça va? How goes it, eh? Ça va, mon ami. It goes. And in the meantime, Moses? I'll tell you, Jeff. I like the smell of the air. I like the sound of so many languages. And the look of so many different kinds of people. I like this country. And so, in the meantime, I will go back and build a schoolhouse and Sarah will teach the children. You could have done that in the first place. Oh, no. But next month, next year, I will try again. Someday there will be a new governor. There will be a legislature. Ça va, Jeff. It goes. Slowly, but it goes. Morning, Mr. Levy. Sure you can't use a good hand with an axe? No, but there's other work. Maybe you will come to settle on the land. Well, who knows? One of these days, maybe I'll change my mind. It's a free country. Moses Levy returned to the wilderness and planted fields and cut roads and built houses. But it was not yet a city, not until he gathered the children and they sat together to learn. If a nation expects to be ignorant and free in a state of civilization, it expects what never was and never will be. And then, it was no longer a wilderness, but a foundation stone of a universe. For it is also written, the world rests on the breath of children in the schoolroom. If you would like a copy of today's script... Please send your name and address with 10 cents to cover the cost of postage and handling to the Jewish Theological Seminary of America, 3080 Broadway, New York 27, New York. Now we take great pleasure in presenting the Honorable Charles H. Silver, President of the Board of Education of New York City and a prominent civic leader. Mr. Silver. This morning's dramatic presentation deals with many themes close to the minds and the hearts of educators. The story of Moses Levy demonstrates 
that man cannot live by bread alone, even in a primitive wilderness community where sheer survival seemed miracle enough. Moses Levy understood that no real society is possible without education. Ignorance, we are reminded, is itself a kind of wilderness, and the truly human impulse is to conquer and order the wilderness both without and within the human heart. Schools and places of worship must follow homes. That is the natural sequence of civilized society. The story reminds us of the enormous sacrifice in setting up a school on the American frontier more than a hundred years ago. Should we not then feel challenged in our own age of abundance to provide ampler educational opportunities? The wilderness has long passed, but there are always educational frontiers. There are many thousands of young Americans who are receiving either a marginal education or who are being deprived of the higher education that their own abilities would warrant. This is a frontier which cries out for the same boldness and determination that Moses Levy displayed in a lonely Florida outpost. The world of tomorrow is being built in the classrooms of today. Can we afford not to succeed in this vital area? I like the sound of so many languages and the look of so many different kinds of people, Moses Levy declares. The school is the meeting place for countless children who learn to live and play together and share the matchless heritage of American democracy. Moses Levy hearkened to Thomas Jefferson's stirring words. If a nation expects to be ignorant and free in a state of civilization, it expects what never was and never will be. The natural climate of freedom is knowledge. Otherwise, freedom shrinks and withers. At a time when the stakes are highest, when the race between disaster and wisdom gets faster and faster, we cannot afford to fail. It may well be that in the final reckoning of history, our own age may be described not as the atomic age or the jet age, but rather the age of education. What nobler title could any period enjoy? Thank you, Mr. Silver. Our eternal light drama today, Moses Levy in the Wilderness, was written by Joseph Mendel and was suggested by the proceedings of the Conference on the Writing of Regional History in the South. Featured in the cast were Louis Van Ruten, Carl Weber, Norman Rose, Mitzi Gould, Jim Bowles, Leon Janney, and Roger Boxo. This is Lionel Rico speaking. Our program is directed by George Vutsas. This weekly program is presented under the auspices of the Jewish Theological Seminary of America. David Putterman sang the liturgical introduction. This is the NBC Radio Network.